There are a whole lot of other questions arise as soon as we begin to think about this. How is it the sun knows what's going on in the solar system? Um, what's actually the basis of its knowledge and uh, does it have organs of perception? It's generally taken for granted in traditional societies that the sun knows what's happening on Earth. And the sun is usually portrayed as having an eye, the eye of Horus in Egyptian mythology, for example. And uh, the idea that the, the sun is an eye is, is a commonplace in many cultures. In Malay, uh, for example, the word for sun is matahari, which means the eye of the day. And we have the very same concept in the name of the flower, the daisy. The daisy looks like a sun with the, the central yellow bit and the petals coming off from it. And daisy is short for day's eye. That's what daisy means. It's a kind of model of the sun or an image of the sun. So how would the sun know what's going on within the solar system? Well, one way would be through the electromagnetic field. The electromagnetic field on the Earth, which we're all part of now, it includes all the radio waves in this room, all the things going on inside our brains, electrical changes, everything that's happening uh, on Earth is within the Earth's magnetic field, and that's within the magnetic field of the Sun. It's possible that the Sun can directly know uh, what's happening through the electromagnetic field. That may be the interface, its sense organ. This recalls uh, an idea of Isaac Newton's, one of his most interesting ideas in my view. Uh, when Newton was trying to think about the nature of gravity, um, he couldn't work out how matter could attract other matter across empty space. And um, in fact, he came up with the idea that empty space wasn't just a kind of blank, neutral container. It was, as he put it, the sensorium, the sense organ of God. He thought absolute space was God's sense organ. God is omnipotent and omniscient, knows everything. How does God know everything? Most people who believe in God, I believe in God myself, um, you, you take it for granted there's a kind of divine omniscience, but Newton was one of the very few people who thought about how it might work. And he thought one way it worked was through the gravitational, uh, the, the gravitation and absolute space were closely linked. God's sense organ was absolute space, therefore he knew where everything was, how fast it was moving, and where uh, the entire contents of the whole universe at any given time. And uh, through uh, the, 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 this space, he, he, Newton thought that God actually directly powered gravitation itself. We now think in terms of the gravitational field after Einstein's theory of relativity. Everything in space occurs within the gravitational field, uh, which is not in space-time. According, uh, according to Einstein, it is space-time. It's the container of everything in the universe. It's a bit like the world soul, the anima mundi, in these older world views, which contains all things, and in a sense knows all things, because everything registers in this gravitational field. Through the gravitational field, the positions of every object in the universe and their interactions are there. They're in that field. If there were a mind associated with that field, it would know all these things. The activities, the changes, the dynamics, the choices and the, the, the interactions from moment to moment are mediated through electromagnetic fields. So if the mind of the sun um, were to know what's going on in the solar system, it would be through the electromagnetic field. And if the mind of God were to know what's going on in the entire universe, it might be through the universal electromagnetic field as well as the universal gravitational field. And the electric universe theory uh, fits extremely well with this way of thinking because it provides an infrastructure, a, a basis for these kinds of interconnection throughout the whole universe. The other aspect of the sun, uh, just one or two uh, final point, is that uh, it may be mainly concerned with its interaction with the solar system, its extended body, but it may also be concerned with its peer group, other stars. Um, 
We don't know much about the way stars communicate with each other within the galaxy. They can certainly communicate through light and distantly through gravitation. The, the tidal pools of all the planets on the sun affect it. It's sensitive to everything happening in the solar system through gravitation alone, as well as the electromagnetic interactions. Um, but other uh, stars uh, may be interacting with each other. They may be in relationships. Uh, we don't know anything about this we, because we assume they're just all unconscious, just stuff, hydrogen bombs. Um, then uh, th these ideas simply haven't been discussed. Now, how would one investigate this? Um, well, I don't know. I've been trying to think of empirical tests for the sun's consciousness. One such possible test would be through interactions with it. My own ideas about the sun being conscious were triggered, I have to admit, by uh, when I was about 17, I read Fred Hoyle's science fiction book, The Black Cloud, some of you may have read it, uh, where human beings are interacting with an, an intelligence within a kind of plasma cloud. Uh, that, uh, and how they interact is by they send messages and they get messages back. That's how they know that it can think or be conscious. A lot of people actually do send messages to the sun. When I lived in India, where I lived for seven years, it's a standard practice among Hindus to chant a mantra to the sun, the Gayatri mantra, a, a major yoga exercise, one I do myself every morning, Surya Namaskar, salutation to the sun, is a salutation to greet the sun in the morning. And there are many prayers addressed to the sun, a thanksgiving and prayers. Uh, in shamanic cultures, uh, some of them are addressing the sun. Already, there are people out there, millions of them, actually, as they believe, consciously interacting with the sun. I'd start by asking them if they'd ever received any messages. Actually, start not by reinventing the wheel, but actually take seriously practices that people in different cultures throughout the world have been doing traditionally for a long time. Most Westerners think they're vastly superior to these stupid, superstitious uh, people who need to be educated out of these animistic views. Uh, but it may turn out that in these areas we have a great deal to learn from them. It's possible then that if there is a way of interacting with the sun, it might be possible to send messages to the sun saying, please show us a sign and could you, if you get this message, you know, have a pattern of solar flares such that you know, we can uh, detect them easily. I mean, that's a very crude example, but that might be possible. So this may not be entirely in the realm of speculation, but clearly this kind of research would go way beyond anything that's being done today. Um, it would also, I have to add, uh, it's a makes it, what makes it more feasible is that it would be a great deal cheaper than solar probes and satellites. Um, <laughs> As soon as you look at anything holistically, it becomes much cheaper. Holistic science is not any more fun, but much less expensive uh, than reductionist science. Um, so, um, I offer these thoughts, uh, um, but you, I'm, I'm sure some of you are feeling very skeptical about this, um, rightly so. Um, but um, if we're going to be heretics, if we're going to push out this electric universe model, um, I'd just like to see how far it can go. And I think it can take us a great deal further than any of the rival cosmologies on the market. And that's one reason I find it so attractive.